Hi there, I'm Yasmina Eklenstam, the low histamine chef. Today I'm going to share with you one of my favorite recipes from the anti-detox book. Why call it the anti-detox book? Because I believe that what we put into the diet is way more important than what we take out of it. And so eating a high nutrient diet full of antihistamine and anti-inflammatory ingredients is what I believe will give us the best chance for healing our inflammation. So what are we going to put in this delicious butternut, coconut, turmeric, and saffron soup? Wait, I forgot something. It's shallots too. I guess the name really sums it up. Here's what we're working with today. Now, please remember that you're not going to have to use every single one of these ingredients. You can feel free to substitute anything that doesn't work for you. I used to. I mean, I wasn't able to eat all of this food when I first started out on the diet. It really depends where you are. Are you still in the elimination phase? Are you just emptying your bucket or are you just keeping your bucket, your histamine bucket that is, balanced? I personally believe in the inflammation bucket, which is that everything we put in that has a little bit of inflammation builds up, builds up, and then we spill over and it's game over and we have to start all over again. So rather than focusing on the histamine, I say focus on the inflammation. And the great thing about all of these foods that are here that are going into this soup is that they are antihistamine and anti-inflammatory. Let's start with this butternut squash. Butternut has been shown to inhibit allergic responses. It's also been shown to possess anti-ulcer properties. It is also high inulin, which means it could boost the beneficial probiotic bacteria in our guts. It's also, strangely, an antidepressant, but hey, why not? I'd rather eat my medicine, don't know about you. Let's see, what else do we have here? Now, one of my favorite new ingredients, the young Thai coconut. This is what it looks like on the inside. It's thick, it's creamy, it's sweet, it's absolutely delicious. Not only is it delicious, it's incredibly good for you. It's full of the kind of fats that prevents Alzheimer's disease, it's antibacterial, it's a painkiller. There are so many benefits to this coconut, I can't even begin to tell you. My next ingredient is super high nutrient and tastes delicious chopped or roasted. Can you guess what I'm talking about? It's shallots. Shallots are super high in quercetin, the histamine lowering bioflavonoid. It's one of the many reasons I use them and it's only one of the numerous health benefits. And now here are some of the other amazing ingredients. We have anti-inflammatory pain-killing chili. We have antihistamine and anti-inflammatory coriander chives. We have antihistamine basil. Now, some varieties of basil have been shown to be as effective as the most commonly prescribed digestive issue medications, such as Zantac. We have nigella sativa seeds, as potent an H1 receptor antagonist as the most commonly prescribed sinus nasal spray. My next ingredient may be a little hard to justify in terms of cost and that is saffron here in its powdered version. Saffron is an amazing antihistamine though. It's been shown to have an effect on the H1 receptor which deals with respiratory symptoms. And now to what I consider to be one of the most essential ingredients for any kitchen, at least a Mediterranean kitchen, olive oil. It helps prevent osteoporosis. It boosts DAO, the histamine lowering diamine oxidase enzyme and it's delicious. This bottle came from my friend's finca here in Spain, which is fancy speak for somewhere that you produce olive oil. It's organic and I absolutely adore it. Two of the most essential ingredients to not just this recipe, but any recipe, at least in my kitchen, and that's ginger. As potent as ranitidine, also known as Zantac, there are a lot of foods out there that are as potent as pharmaceuticals. What does that tell you? And we have turmeric. Turmeric is an anti-anaphylactic. It's a mast cell stabilizer. People with variants of the MAO gene might struggle with it, but as with all of these foods, just because they have these medicinal properties doesn't mean you're going to be okay with them. I feel that I have to say that to people over and over again. What works for one isn't going to work for the other, but we can give it a good go. So let's get started. Preheat the oven to 200 degrees Celsius, about 380 degrees Fahrenheit, and grab a baking tray.
Don't worry about the specifics for now. The full recipe is going to be available for you on my blog. You'll find a link at the end of this video. But for now, let's get started with chopping the vegetables. Now that everything's prepared, it's time to drizzle your baking tray with a little bit of olive oil. Use as much as you like. And then we're going to start tossing some of these great vegetables onto the tray. There we go. And some of the quercetin rich shallots. And so now the finishing touch is just a little drizzle of vitamin C rich lemon. We're gonna leave the vegetables in the oven for 20 to 30 minutes until they're very obviously beautifully roasted and nice and soft. There we go. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to make a little bit of coconut milk. I'm working from fresh young Thai coconut, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. It's not an exact science. What I do is I take the contents of one young Thai coconut. Stick it in the blender. You don't need a Vitamix. A Vitamix is great, but absolutely unnecessary. Anything will do. Take about four cups of water. People often ask me, how big are your cups? Well, I'm not really sure. I have about 10 different sizes of cups. Again, not an exact science. At the end of the day, if we have a smidge more or a smidge less, it's not going to make much of a difference. And there you have it, fresh coconut milk. I honestly do not know why anyone goes store-bought when it's this easy. In any case, what we're going to do now is we're going to take these vegetables, we're going to put them in the pot. We're gonna pour the coconut milk on top, we're gonna to bring it to the boil, and then we're gonna turn it down to a simmer and let it go for about 20 to 30 minutes, depending on how long you have. The longer you let it simmer, the deeper and richer the flavor is going to be. So it's up to you. And there you have it, we're almost done. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to spoon the soup very carefully into the blender. Okay, so now it's all in the blender and what we're gonna do is we're gonna give this a nice big buzz. And there we go, all done. See, it's not so hard making soup, is it? Now we're just gonna pour this. Now, if this soup is a little too thick for you and it's definitely not for me, you could add some more coconut milk or a little bit of water. Now I'm just gonna garnish with a little bit of fresh chives, one of my favorite herbs. As I said, super high in quercetin, antihistamine, anti-inflammatory. And now you could also add some more olive oil, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Mmm. Well, I don't know what else I was expecting. It's delicious. Mmm. So you'll find the link for this recipe in just a moment. Don't forget that it's from the Anti-Detox Cookbook, which you can find on my website, thelowhistaminechef.com. I'm also on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash thelowhistaminechef. And you can also find me on Twitter, and Instagram at L Histamine Chef. And that's it for now. I'm Yasmina Ekelenstam, the Low Histamine Chef. Thanks for joining me. Mm -hmm.